Hello everybody, welcome to Virtual Table Tips, a bite-sized show that breaks down some hidden features and interesting ways to use some of my favorite tools like Foundry and Dungeon Draft. Today we're going to order some of the items off of Foundry's hidden menu and see how they taste. Let's get started. If you hold Alt while dragging an actor onto a scene, it will place it with its visibility set to hidden. This can be a tiny time saver during your prep or let you place hidden enemies around your players when they catch you by surprise. Everybody knows that you can pin journal entries to scenes as notes, but did you know that you can right-click on a journal in the sidebar, and if it's pinned somewhere on your current scene, it will have an option to jump to pin? This can be helpful on region or city maps, where you may have placed a large number of pins because it's easier to just search for a location's name than to go on a Where's Waldo hunt for that CD bar your players are looking for. Are you tired of asking your players what their AC is when you make an attack, or is there some other attribute you need access to in combat? Head over to the combat tracker, click on this gear icon, and you'll find an awesome little quality of life feature called the resource tracker, which, as its name implies, is for tracking an attribute of every character in the encounter that only you can see. So rather than trollishly asking Callista if a 28 hits, I can just look at her 15 AC and start rolling damage. Do you hate having to do this little click and drag maneuver to let go of a token? You can change that by going to Settings, Configure Settings, and checking the Left Click to Release Objects option. Once that's checked, you can just click anywhere on the canvas to let go of your token. Have you ever wanted to bring just a single player to a scene? You can easily do that by heading to the scene you want to bring them to, and right-clicking on their name in the player list and clicking Pull to Scene. If you're playing with randoms online, you may also find the other two options of Kick and Ban useful as well. Kicking will log the user out of the world, but they'll still be able to rejoin. If you ban them on the other hand, it will kick them back to the login screen, and when they try to log back in, they'll be met with a message telling them they don't have access to the world anymore. You can unban by expanding the player list, right-clicking on their username and selecting unban, or you can easily delete their account from the user list if you don't ever want them coming back. If you ever need to upload a bunch of files at once, or delete something you've already uploaded, it can be tricky to find where Foundry stores all of your data. Thankfully, there's a hidden but easy way to access it by right-clicking on the Foundry icon in your Start Bar or Dock, and clicking on Browse User Data. Once you open the Data folder, you'll find all of your worlds, systems, modules, and other folders, and you can start moving things around as needed much faster than you can inside Foundry. If you're not seeing this as an option when you right-click on your Foundry icon, then unpin Foundry from your start bar, launch it, and then pin it. This will ensure you have access to those options even when Foundry isn't open. Last but not least, did you know that for Foundry's second anniversary last week, they worked with JDW, who develops Dice So Nice and The Roll Smith, to make a free Dice So Nice skin for the community? You can search for Rollsmith in the module installer to find it easily, and then once you've activated it, you can head to the Settings tab, click on the Configure Settings button, change to the Module Settings tab, and then press the My Dice Settings button and change the Dice Presets option to be the Rollsmith-FoundryVTT. Then you'll have these awesome iron and lava infused dice that look particularly great in dark scenes where you can really see the glowing effect. I hope that at least one of those features was new to all of you, and if you like this kind of content, let me know, and I'll see about making more in the future. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.